What are your thoughts on reductionism? So, yeah, there used to be this debate between reductionism and non-reductive physicalism, and it's still, it's still around, actually. Uh, and emergence is sort of one version of non-reductive physicalism. Well, there's also people who are not physicalists. Okay, so there's, there's, there's reductive physicalism that says, you know, the mind is the brain or mental types or brain types, they're identical. Then there's non-reductive physicalism that says, well, they are physical, mental things are physical, mental types are physical, but they're not reducible. They're not identical to um, the, the brain. In fact, they're distinct. You know, typically that's the opposition. They're distinct from the brain types and they have their own distinct causal powers. And then there's people who say, oh, actually there's like non-physical properties too. Um, and so I've kind of argue, argued a little bit against um, non-reductive physicalism by saying, oh, well, we need to look at the brain. But um, I um, also think that the traditional form of reductionism that was typically defended is uh, inadequate. I don't really, I don't call myself a reductionist. I don't like either the traditional reductionist um, line that, you know, mental types are identical to physical types. And I also don't like the traditional non-reductive view that they're distinct. I think that there's partial overlap. So, because this is just a special case of the relation that obtains between any higher levels and lower levels within any kind of complex system or any portion of reality. You know, you can study a portion of reality or a system at different levels of grain, different scales, if you will, or different levels of organization. They're not exactly the same thing, right. but, you know, right, right, right. for present purposes, it's, you know, different levels. And the, I argue that the relation between different levels is one of essentially partial overlap. So a higher level of a of a property, you know, a lot of property at a higher level is an aspect of its lower level realizer. The realizer is going to be a collection of properties possessed by the parts that make up that system. Um, and the, the properties that we tend to attribute to systems as a whole are aspects of the, the properties, the larger, vaster collection of properties that the parts of the system have. And this can be iterated, you know, at different scales so there's a behaving organism and it has certain properties you know it does certain things well those are aspects of what its parts do its parts do a lot of things for example to each other and you know it would be pointless or or it may be even a category mistake to try to attribute that what the, what the parts do to each other to the whole organism i mean you can think of it that way well the organism includes the parts so it includes all the activities of the parts, but normally that's not what we do. And the, so the whole reason, the whole point of thinking about a, a system as a whole is to figure out what it does as a whole. Okay, so that's only an aspect of what the parts do, but the parts have parts and those parts have also parts. So this can, can you know, can iterate down the levels and at each level, what, you know, what the whole does or what a system of parts do is an aspect of what their parts do and, and the properties of the holes or you know, the, the holes that say um, neurons are an aspect of what the molecules that make up the neurons do. So, so you don't really have a reduction in the traditional sense, but you also don't have distinctness in the sense of traditional anti-reductionism. And I do. Th I think this is a this is a promising idea. I think it has it has a chance of finding a better way to think about levels and their relations that avoid some of the traditional problems. I agree. I agree. And I think it's not making a strong ontological claim in either direction that something new has to be invented, like non-reductive physicalism often does. But it's more so just let's be careful with the kinds of methods we're using, the kinds of conceptual choices we're making when we're trying to understand a system that's sufficiently complex. Yes, I agree. Mm -hmm.